to find out how a relationship in an entity relationship diagram turns out in a relational database. Let's take a look at our concrete player team example that we just looked at. So that would be the entity relationship diagram for the description that we had just given that a team might have many players and every player might belong to at most one team. But of course it's possible that you've got players who belong to no teams and also teams that have as yet no players. So that's our scenario and the entity relationship diagram turns out to be as shown here. Okay, let's just loop back to the tables that we had looked at earlier. So this is sort of what our players table looked like earlier. Of course, our table had several attributes, additional attributes, but here we are looking at just player ID, first name, last name, date of birth. Those were the attributes. But of course, we also saw that it had an attribute called team ID, which indicated the team to which a player belonged. And of course, the team table looked like this, team ID, team name. And we know from experience that the team ID in the player table really refers to the team ID in the team table. That is, for any given player, the value of the attribute team ID is what tells us which team they belong to. Okay, And that's really what the essence of the relationship is. You're saying every player belongs to a team or could belong to at most one team. In fact, in this example, every player does actually belong to a team uh, and every team actually seems to have players. But it's possible that you've got players who don't belong to any team and teams that have no players. But the point is the team ID field in the player table is what tells us the team to which the player is connected and that's nothing but the relationship between the entity types, player and, table, and team. So from that, what we conclude or what we can see is that relationships are represented by lines in entity relationship diagrams and they are simply expressed through foreign keys in relational tables. In other words, the primary key of the team table has been added as a field in the players table to indicate that there is a connection between these two tables. Okay, So effectively speaking then, relationships are represented through foreign keys. Okay, so relationships are represented by adding the primary key of one table as a foreign key column. So this column here, the team ID column in the players table, that is called as a foreign key, right? Because it's not the primary key of this table. The primary key of this table is player ID, but this happens to be the primary key of some other table, namely the teams table. And that is what is able to connect a row in the player's table to some row in the team's table. Of course, it's perfectly possible that many players may have the same team ID to indicate that they all belong to the same team, as you see here. Okay, so that is how you represent relationships in relational tables. Okay, so that's the idea here. So now, important point to observe is, although the player's table has a field called team ID. That field is not being shown as an attribute in the player's entity type. Why is that? It's just a convention. Okay, the convention is that in any one-to-many relationship, so in this case, we have a team-to-player relationship that's a one-to-many. In any one-to-many relationship, automatically, the primary key of the entity type on the one side is always an attribute of the entity type on the uh, many side. In other words, on the one side of this one-to-many relationship, you have team, which I have not shown here. Okay, The primary key of that is team ID. That is automatically an attribute of the entity on the many side, namely the player. Okay, And because it's it has to be because that's the only way the relationship can be shown in the form of a table. So it's at the time we convert this diagram into a relational table, we'll automatically add that as an attribute. Okay, so that is implicit. And uh, the one of the conventions in trying to draw diagrams is these diagrams can, can get pretty complicated very soon. 
as it is they are complicated so we don't want to add additional complexity by including redundant things in the diagram adding team id in the player entity type would actually be redundant because the line on the one to many relationship tells us exactly that so we don't want to repeat that we want to avoid clutter so that is why as a matter of convention we do not show this foreign key attributes in any entity types okay because the foreign key attributes come in because of relationship the relationship has already been shown so there's no point in showing the foreign key attribute again it will only be confusing so that's the idea okay so this we want to avoid this redundancy and therefore we do not show the foreign key attribute on the entity type but of course when it comes to a table that's how you have to show it because that is how relationship is represented in relational tables okay so coming back to our mapping entity types are represented as tables and relationship is represented in the form of a foreign key in the relational database so again we return to our courses table sections table and of course we know that course id in the sections table is nothing but a foreign key which connects to the course id in the courses table okay of course this is showing the relationship between courses and sections that uh, a course can have many sections and every section must be of a particular course okay so we know this and this is what is showing the relationship once again by means of a foreign key this is the foreign key that's the relationship now the base cr diagram would look like this so again let's try to construct it from scratch let's first find the degree of the relationship and therefore we ask the question at most how many sections can a course have can it have just one section or can it have many sections now we know from experience that every course could have many sections right so you have this course and there are many many sections of the course which are being offered so clearly that's many but how about a section a section be connect can be connected to how many courses obviously a section is a section of a particular course okay so a section can only be connected to one course so a section cannot be connected to multiple courses and therefore this is our usual one to many relationship one course can have many sections but a section can be of only one course okay so that resolves the issue of degree let's now look at the issue of obligatory participation okay does every course require to have a section does every course need to have at least one section no maybe not you've got a course it's not yet been offered it's just on the books it's never been offered so no section of the course how about section does every section have to be a section of some course right in other words does every section need to be associated with at least one course yes you can't just offer a section all by itself it has to be a section of some course whatever subject you're teaching in that section therefore that's a yes okay so we have now the entity types course and section and we know the uh, the degree of the relationship it's a one to many with one course having many sections and we also know which entity types have to participate in the relationship and which don't have to participate in the relationship so we have uh, almost everything we need to draw at least a skeletal entity relationship diagram and that's what it's going to look like okay because a course need not participate so dash line section must participate solid line a course can have many sections crow foot section can have only one course can be of only one course black nothing no crow foot okay so that's our entity relationship diagram here okay and this is giving you the explanation that i just spoke out okay so that's so far as our er diagram for the course section situation goes of course the diagram is still incomplete and we'll shortly see why that is the case why is this diagram still incomplete let's now get a little bit deeper and consider what is the primary key for each of these tables of course the primary key for our course entity type is course id probably okay so that's no problem but what about the primary key for the sections table right so here if you look at this table you find that we have two sections of course 10 we have two three sections of course 30 and a section of course 40 
Okay, so we've got several sections uh, of each of these courses. Therefore, course ID clearly cannot be a primary key for the sections table. Why? Because a section has many courses. And if you say something is a primary key or an identifier, then it has to be unique. The same value cannot repeat in the table. So if I make course ID as the primary key for the sections table, then you've got multiple course IDs, uh, multiple values of the same uh, course ID, 10 or 30. Okay, so if I say course number 10, you don't know which section we are talking about. You don't know if you're talking about this section or this section. Okay, so course ID cannot be the primary key. Now, can we say the section name is the primary key of the sections table? Unfortunately, no, because section name AA repeats, section name AB repeats. Okay, so section name also cannot be the primary key. Clearly, instructor ID cannot be the primary key. That also repeats. So what do we do? What is the, there is no single unique field in the sections table. How do we create a primary key for this table? Okay, so that's an important question. Now, till now, we've encountered scenarios where the primary key has always been one single column. That doesn't have to be the case. If you consider the combination of course ID and section name, that's always unique because you've got course 10, course ID 10, it has sections A, A, A and AB. Course number 30 has sections A, 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 B and W, B. But if you take the combination for the same course ID, you're not going to get the same section name more than once, at least in our scenario. If you consider sections across multiple semesters, then even that can happen, but we're not considering that right now. So if you're considering the scenario for just one semester, then the course ID section name combination is unique. And therefore, the combination can be the primary key. Okay, so this is a case where you have a compound primary key, a primary key that's made up of more than one column. That's called as a compound primary key. Okay, now notice again, just verify for yourself that the combination does not repeat in across multiple rows. Right, so you've got 10 AA, that occurs just once. 10 AB does not occur more than once, okay? So that's unique and therefore that's what is going to be the primary key for this table, okay? So the primary key is made up of both of these fields. So it's a compound primary key that we have. Okay, now the important point is that uh, you've got, this is a one-to-many relationship course and section, right? And notice that we are not showing the course ID, even though the course ID is in uh, the table sections, we're not showing that as an attribute. Why? Remember, this is a one-to-many relationship. A course can have many sections. And we already know that a one-to-many relationship is shown by adding a foreign key. That is why the course ID is part of the sections table because it's a foreign key. It tells us which course corresponds to this particular section. And we already know implicitly that the course ID is implicitly an attribute in the sections table. Okay, it's implicitly an attribute because it's a one-to-many relationship and a section happens to be on the many side of the relationship and therefore we take the course ID and add it as an attribute here Anyway, that is implicit as we discussed earlier. Because of that, we do not show the course ID here in section, right? Just like in the previous case, we did not show the attribute team ID in the player entity type. We didn't show that because it is implicitly an attribute derived from the one-to-many relationship. Same thing here, right? So we cannot show the course ID attribute here because it's implicit and yet, the course ID attribute is part of the primary key of the section table, okay? Now, primary key, of course, is very important. You somehow need to indicate what's the primary key of the table. So what's, how do you solve the problem, okay? So clearly, section name is part of the primary key. So we've got the primary key notation here, but we are I, ideally, we would like to put the same notation and add course ID also here, but we can't do that because that would be redundant. Course ID is implicitly an attribute. So how do we indicate that course ID 
is also part of the key. You do that by adding this notation. See this bar here? This notation we add to indicate that the primary key of the entity type on the opposite side has been borrowed as the key of this entity type as well. Okay, so course ID is implicitly an attribute, we know that, but we want to tell that course ID is part of the primary key as well. Okay, so this notation that we see here, the notation that I have highlighted, shows that the primary key of the entity on the other side, which is course ID, is part of the primary key of this entity type. And this is called key migration. When we borrow the primary key of another entity type to compose the primary key of our entity of another entity type, we use the key migration notation because we do not show that as an attribute. It would be redundant and yet we have to show that it's part of the key. So this notation, the bar that you put here, that is called as the key migration notation. Okay. So when you see a diagram like this and you ask what is the primary key of section you have to say, well, this notation tells me clearly that section name is part of the primary key, but this notation tells me that the primary key of the entity on the other side, namely course ID, is also a part of the key. So when you look at this diagram, you can say that the primary key for section is section name plus course ID, because course ID has been borrowed through migration. Okay, so that's the key migration notation that we have introduced in this particular slide. Okay, so when foreign key is part of the primary key of another table, we use the key migration notation. Whenever the foreign key is part of the primary key, as is the case in this course section scenario, we use the key migration notation. 